So yesterday we talked about negative feedback and I got to thinking about it. I, I drew my, my triangle, go back to yesterday's if you, if you need a little tutorial on what negative feedback is because I think it's important for us to understand. But I started looking at it and I thought, okay, how does that work? How do, how do we take this, this simple triangle that I drew, remember? Here was the minus, here's the plus, here's the output. And if we took the output and put it all the way back to the input, then uh, whatever signal is here, then we get the identical thing out here because feedback helps us make sure that the output is the same as the input. The same thing that we do on a servo woofer. Servo woofers, we know, as, as we've talked about, and we'll talk more about them as we get closer to designing and building our own speakers for PS Audio, because they'll all have servo-controlled woofers, because that's feedback. That's what we want to do. We want to make sure that the output is the same as the input, but feedback isn't a panacea. It isn't the perfect thing that we just put gobs and gobs of it in there, because if we do that, it's going to sound like crap. We don't want to do that. So, what do we want to do? Well, we want to be able to control the amount of open loop gain, which is what feedback takes. The higher open loop gain is reduced down to here, and we get low distortion, good sound, right? But I wanted to talk today, and so this question comes from Paul in Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> Me! I wanted, I wanted to share with you kind of how this works. And I, I'm going to do this as an experiment because if, if you were to be in our engineering meetings, most of what we talk about in engineering gets kind of complicated, right? And I don't want to have that happen on these videos. I really don't. I, I want you to kind of understand about engineering. I want you to understand um, how all this works. And I'm going to do it as simply and easily as I can. But originally, I had drawn up here what we call a difference amplifier. And what that means, okay, so a difference amplifier means that this will amplify only the differences between this input and this input. This is called the inverting input, and this is called the non-inverting input. Very, this is an op amp, right? And here's your output. Okay, whatever, if, if the same signal if you have exactly, and I'm not much of an artist here, but if you have exactly the same signal that comes in the inverting and the non-inverting input at the same time, what comes out here is a big fat goose egg. There's no difference between these two. And, and as an aside, that's how a balanced cable works, right? Remember, <clears throat> we had, here we go, we're getting off on a tangent, all right. <laughs> We know that a balanced cable it has two wires in it, right? And we know that on one is the non-inverting or the in-phase signal, and on the other is the out-of-phase signal, which is exactly what this wants, right? So in your balanced cable, you have two, and if this is coming in here and this is doing the opposite here, then what you get out here is an amplified signal. Why is that important? Because if we have noise coming in, like me, I'm noise, if I'm shouting real loud or there's hum, and that hum is on this and, and that at the same time, right? What happens? This gives you zero hum. Because if the hum is like that, and the signal is like that, this difference amplifier will ignore the hum, the stuff we don't want that's in common on both of those things, right? And it will then amplify only what we do want. Sorry, here's a quick explanation of a balanced cable and how we use what's called common mode rejection. It, because this is common to uh, both inputs, all right? So there you go. All right, so that means that's a difference amplifier. And that's how feedback works, right? Because if I put this in here, and I take this through a resistor, and I plug it in here, if it sees the same signal, 
Is that the same? Yep. If it sees the same signal, uh, then you don't get anything out here. But if it sees a difference, then you get the difference between the two. Why is that important? Well, imagine that as we have our signal going in, we have, oh, I don't know. Uh, here, I, I'm going to draw a difference. Let's say it has some tchotchkes on it. Let's say it looks like that, okay? And if we had no feedback, this looks like this because, I don't know, it got noise or something on it, right? Well, what's going to happen? If we take this signal and put it back into here, then the difference uh, is going to be amplified and then rejected inside of the amplifier, and whatever is the same will be left alone. And then when we do that, then this is going to become that. So what's inside of this amplifier? Well, inside of this amplifier is what's called a diff pair, a differential pair. All right, so that's uh, a current source. Well, let's just make that a resistor. And, and, and up here is our battery, right? So we've got plus something, and down here we've got minus something. And th this is volts, right? So, and, and that's literally a battery. All right, these are transistors, and in this case, these are end kind of transistors. So you remember those two inputs I showed you? Well, here, this is our plus input, and here, this is our minus input. So what, what happens? I think this may be too complicated for people. Well, let's see. We're going to go ahead and try it anyway. Attach to here, and I draw this little thing because I don't, and on the drawing, I don't want this to touch that, okay? And that goes over to here. And there's another transistor. This happens to be a P-type. And then here is our output. So you remember our triangle? Minus, plus, out. Okay, so the plus is there, the minus is there, the out is there. Got it? Now, whoa, if, if I put a signal into here, what happens? Well, this voltage, this is a valve, okay? And, and if I don't have a signal here, this valve just sits there doing nothing. And coming, you know, out of here at this point, there's no current being drawn. And so it's kind of sitting up on top. It's sitting at this plus voltage. As soon as I put a voltage in here, so let's say that voltage is starting to go up towards here, right? This starts to conduct. And when it conducts, current starts traveling through this transistor. And it, when we, if we have, Boy, this probably is too complicated. If we have plus and we have a resistor, and um, how can I draw this so you can see easily? And another resistor, if I measure, and if there's no, hmm, this is not a good example. I think I'm getting too, uh, anyway. Um, when this valve, here, let's, let's draw it like this. And, and we'll draw a valve like a, uh, there. Okay, so when this valve, like a, a turning valve, is off and there's no current flowing, there's no electricity flowing between the two, then when you measure here, let's say this is 10 volts, you'll get 10 volts here. But as you start turning the valve, so the water or the current starts flowing through here, then there's a drop across this resistor, and this 10 volts now becomes 2 volts or 0 volts or however much current. And the more current we draw, the lower this goes, right? And then as that valve turns back up, this goes from 2 volts back up to 10. Like, same thing's happening here. So as the signal goes up, this is going down, okay? That's our inverted signal. 
And then when we connect it up to this transistor, the exact same thing happens. But instead of going down, well, it does because this is the minus voltage here, then it actually winds up going in the opposite direction. So this becomes this. Now, all we have to do is, and if you do, if you, I don't think I'm doing a very good job of explaining this. If you put this same signal into this one, okay, it does the opposite because it's connected through its emitter through here and controls this differently. So as this goes up, this one stops conducting and goes the other direction. This is definitely too complicated for most people to get. Anyway, <laughs> maybe my explanation of the, the balancing thing. But this is what is in, this is what, and sorry if I lost you, but this is what is inside of this that we talked about earlier, which is the basis of pretty much everything we do in, in amplification. Okay, that's this, this, this configuration of uh, a difference amplifier. And, and that is the last thing I'll show you. Here is the simplest solid state amplifier you can imagine. Here's ground, here's plus, okay, and this is your output. Remember we did that on the diff pair? We had just another one flipped over here. Well, this is the simplest amplifier we can make, a single transistor and two resistors. When we put a signal in here, the opposite comes out here, only bigger. And then if we draw another one, we can do the opposite and it all connects. But that's the basis of amplification. The other one is the basis of differential operation and negative feedback. Hope I didn't lose you on that. I kind of got into this and thought, I'm going to make this easy and simple, but maybe it isn't so easy and simple. Anyway, you know what? As my friend Seth Godin says, drip, drip, drip. Little bits by bits, we can assimilate knowledge. And you get a little bit in there, and it kind of looks a little familiar. And the next time you see it, it's even more familiar. So <laughs> let's hope that happens. All right. Thanks. Bye.